Hello from San Antonio. This is Siren Tarot. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. My third Pick a Card reading in a row tonight. It is now 2.22 a.m. San Antonio, Texas. Timeless reading, but as I record this, as I start this recording, 2.22 a.m. San Antonio, Texas. So there you go. Your first night together. This can be someone that you're talking to. This could be someone you haven't manifested yet. So yeah, timeless reading, four options. These are ACOs that I bought at Etsy and eBay last year, I guess. This is 2020. Anyway, this is pile one. I'll be shuffling the cards on camera. This is for pile one. This is for pile two. The artist created this in 2018. This is for pile three, June 2020. And quattro, pile four. As always, timestamps will be provided. Take a deep breath and make your selection. If you chose the first painting, here is your reading. Tarot of Sexual Magic. The Moon, La Luna. I was just looking at that, so it looks like he's sucking her nipple, or he's kissing her breast. He's focused on her breast, and that is apt, that is appropriate, because the moon is cancer. Although, of course, in the tarot, the moon, you can hear my stomach, the moon is a Pisces card. But every zodiac sign rules a part of the anatomy, cancer rules the breast, <clears throat> Pisces rules the feet. Knave of chalices, the tower, la torre. The Monera tarot. Devil, El Diablo, so I'm seeing Henry in June because Henry Miller was a Capricorn, Ani Snen was a Pisces, the movie Henry in June, it's taken from Ani Snen's diaries, and it focuses on the love triangle between Henry and his wife, June, and Anna Eastman. Ten of Pentacles. Eight of Swords. Sex starts in the mind. So... 
I see you and this person starting off at a distance. You could have an ocean between you. You could be in Australia. This person could be in Japan, one example of many. And so you start off teasing each other, sexting, but there's more to it than that. For example, um, 210 Tarot, this is my tarot deck, one of my many tarot decks available at makeplaincards.com. I met my first husband over the internet in the dinosaur ages of 2000, before Facebook, before MySpace. We had Zanga in 2000. Anyway, we met at Yahoo Personals when it was free. Um, he was in New York looking for a pen pal on the Southwest. I was in Texas and I'm an Aquarian, so I'm all about friendship, pen pals, that sort of thing. Um, I responded to his ad and he wrote back and I didn't really think much of it. I was dating locally, but I had mentioned a poetry website that I was a regular contributor to, The Blender of Love. He went there and found my poetry and he showed up uh, with a pseudonym. He was calling himself, well, I won't give away his name, but he had a pseudonym. Um, I used my name. At the time, it was Misty Velvet Rainwater. My name is Misty Rainwater Lights now, but Misty Velvet Rainwater is the name my mom gave me. It's on my birth certificate, but I've been Misty Rainwater Lights since marrying my second husband, April 22nd, 2005. My God, I'm loopy, um, lack of sleep. So even though I divorced my second husband in June 2012, I kept lights because that's my son's name. Um, five of Wands, Page of Cups, Five of Swords. Anyway, my first husband fell in love with me on the basis of my poetry. He fell in love with my mind. And so we didn't start sexting right away. It wasn't sexual right away. It was two friends loving each other's minds. Uh, so he was in New York. I was in Texas. We talked on the phone. I loved his New York accent. Oh, my God. I loved his laugh. So we fell in love the way two air signs, Libra, Aquarius, fall in love through our, our minds, our voices, our communication. He has everything in Libra. I have Sun and Venus in Aquarius. So, what else? Oh, the Semirame Tarot. And although our marriage didn't work out, I left him to be with my second husband. I tell my son often, if it wasn't for my first husband, you wouldn't be here. So, it's all connected. Four of Wands. Three of Swords. Two of Swords. But you know, we ended up getting married. Um, he flew me into New York in August. After spending a week together, he proposed marriage, and we got married on a mountain in Austin, December 2000. We had our awkward moments. Like, our first telephone conversation didn't go so well. And he said, let's try that again. It was very awkward. It, it didn't work. And then we had been talking for a few months, and he started to back off. He said, I'm not so sure that we should pursue this. And I went into a panic. So I'm seeing something similar here that you could have your bumps along the way. You could have your rough spots, nine of swords, queen of wands, five of wands. And distance could be the biggest cock block. You could be feeling like it's not gonna work because there's an ocean between us or there's thousands of miles. But if the energy between two people is strong enough, there are no impossibilities. Distance is nothing. So. I 
never really thought that I would get married growing up in Texas. I wasn't like my sister or my cousins or my mom or her mother, my maternal grandmother. They were all cheerleaders. They were popular in high school. They had boyfriends. They went to prom. I never went to a single prom. I did, I did not really have a boyfriend in high school. I mean, there was a guy that I dated briefly, my first sexual experience. We actually met in kindergarten, but uh, it wasn't really a relationship. So I didn't think it was in the cards for me to ever get married. I thought I would be an old maid. Um, by Texas standards, I was an old maid when I got married the first time. I was 2000. 2000, how old was I? I was born in 73. Do the math. I suck at math. I wasn't 30 yet, but seven of wands. Yeah, there could be some resistance. Ace of pentacles, four of wands, but look at, it ends on four of wands, this beautiful marriage card. So I can see the two of you marrying each other eventually. We have 10 of pentacles. Four of Wands. So your first night together, I feel like when you fuck each other the first time, it's established. You're in a relationship. You're in love. It's not a casual dating situation. So I feel like certainly if distance was a factor, and you flew to be with them or they flew to be with you, you're in a relationship. It's not casual. Um, you know, if a man, to be very blunt, to be very crude, to talk like Bukowski, if a man wants a piece of ass, well, he can meet someone on Tinder or whatever and just hook up at Applebee's or not even go that far, just meet somewhere, meet in a park or something, I don't know. But if you're getting on a plane to meet someone, it's probably going to be a relationship. That's an investment. <clears throat> so um, you've decided on each other. You've decided this relationship is going somewhere before you make the travel arrangement. So your first night together, you could be moving in together. Or, um, yeah, you made arrangements through months, maybe years of talking online, on the phone, you decided that you're going to move to wherever they are or they're gonna to come to you. And so your first night together, it's kind of tense because it's the start of something big. You know, you're going to be sharing a home, sharing a life. Uh, there could be a lot of anxiety over this. You'll probably have to drink a couple of cocktails or glasses of wine, a couple of beers to take the edge off. But it's going to be very lusty. It's very possible. It's going to be a fucking marathon. Hours of ambitious thrusting. <laughs> I'm just thinking of Capricorn. Um, people say, oh, Scorpio is so sexy and Aries. Yeah, but to me, Capricorn is the sexiest sign, but I'm biased because I have Mars and Capricorn in the fifth house. So there you go. Um, it's going to be exhausting. It's going to be very physical. But again, not casual. This is a relationship and it's very likely going to lead to marriage. I think the Three of Swords and the Ace of Cups, the, sorry, the Page of Cups. Page of Cups over Three of Swords is just the awkward moments in the beginning, getting to know each other, having maybe an awkward telephone conversation, or now it's all video, Skype, FaceTime, what's that? It's awkward in the beginning. And you're nervous, but you obviously get over it. A possible astral combo for this person is Sun and Capricorn. Gemini rising, Moon and Taurus, that's just one possibility. You could have Sun in Gemini, Aries rising, Moon in Libra. But I do see the two of you marrying each other with the usual caveat, caveat, caveat. The usual disclaimer, 
this is a general reading for a vast unseen collective. It's not a personal reading. It's your story or it isn't. English is my first and only language, but I'm still always consulting the dictionary. How do you pronounce this word? It's probably because I have Mercury and Pisces square Saturn and Gemini, or it could be because I'm a native Texan. I don't know. Geo. Beg. They may be into the whole begging thing. You're the one. Big one. Big one. You know, fill in the blanks. <laughs> oh, big boy. <laughs> Shit. Roy. Um, Ioni. Brie. You could have brie cheese and wine your first night together. Oh, I hear this man saying, I'll give you something to gnaw on. <laughs> I need to go to bed. I need to take my Tylenol PMs to get in the bath and get in bed with the book. Light. That is my last name minus an S. Hmm. Bring it. Any names? <clears throat> Lonnie. Lonnie Anderson. She was married to Burt Reynolds once upon a time. She's a Leo. He was an Aquarian. Um, this person could compliment you on your leg or legs. We're missing an S. Brit. Tony. Tony. That is what I have. <laughs> it's late. I'm goofy. That's what I have for pile one. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Check out my community posts, my playlist, my zodiac readings, my Patreon, which is gracias. Shows the second painting. Here is your reading. Sexual magic. It's like I tell my clients all the time. I manifested all of my exes. I was intentional. Um, talking about my serious exes. Well, not even just the serious ones, but. I've been very big on manifestation, magic, energy work since the early 90s, since I saw the Doors movie, The Emperor, The Hermit, and this is what I believe, Nine of Pentacles, two Virgo cards, The Hermit and Nine of Pentacles. I have Virgo rising, Moon and Virgo. And my Sun and Venus and Aquarius are in the sixth house, the house of Virgo. This is my very strong belief. To manifest a life worth having, you have to be intentional, you have to be conscious, you have to take care of your spiritual hygiene, you have to take breaks from the noise, you have to spend time alone in thought, contemplation. Uh, I go through four, five, six manifestation journals a year. 
my focus these past five years being in hermit mode has been on growing my channel, um, putting money in the bank, being here for my son. Because I was wild for a few years. I was very promiscuous. I was having indiscriminate sex. It was gross, and I'll never return to that. I don't feel any guilt or shame. I'm a human being. Um, but I won't return to that kind of life. I know that. And I know that if I ever fall in love again and manifest a relationship with a man again, it's going to be good. It's going to be solid. It's not going to be casual. This is going to be someone that I connect with on multiple levels. That's all that I'm willing to accept at the age of 48, almost 49. If he can't be the emperor, I'm just not interested. So, the Monera. The Lovers. The Mirror. And by mirror, they mean Wheel of Fortune. That's funny. It's like two Gemini cards, but it's Gemini and Sagittarius, and they do mirror each other. It's like I've said a lot with uh, the Zodiac, with Western astrology, which is the only system I'm really familiar with. The opposite signs aren't actually opposites. They tend to mirror each other. Leo Aquarius, the most creative axis in Western astrology. Gemini, Sagittarius, um, the craziest. Not really, I'm being facetious, but I don't know. I've not given it that much thought, but I see uh, Virgo, Pisces is the most spiritual. And Leo, Aquarius is the most creative. With Gemini, there is an intense desire to connect with a lover mentally. If you have a lot of Gemini in your chart, you tend to be a sapiosexual, like this Gemini that I met at OkCupid in 2016. He was very much about that. Um, and that's why I fell for him, because he spoke fluent German. And just right away, you know, his Gemini energy, my Aquarius energy, we were just texting nonstop. It was, it was beautiful in the beginning. Sagittarius, similar. But with Sagittarius, you tend to see people, people who have a lot of Sagittarius in their chart, you tend to see them marrying someone from another culture, another ethnicity, someone who speaks another language. Sagittarius, more so than Gemini, is about the experience. They collect experiences. Nine of Cups. One of my many tarot decks available at makeplaincards.com, 210 tarot. Four of Swords, Page of Wands. See, I call the Four of Swords the Hermit of the Minor Arcana. Although, Nine of Pentacles, yes, that is Virgo. Those are both Virgo cards, but and I associate Four of Swords with Aquarius, but Aquarius and Virgo, that's a very similar energy, actually. Um, you're going to have to spend some time in contemplation before you manifest this. Ten of Wands. It's like a Gemini, another Gemini told me a few years ago, he was actually the inspiration. He was the catalyst for me starting this channel. I thought he was my divine masculine there for a minute. I went down the whole twin flame rabbit hole, and then I thought, no, I don't think so. But anyway, it's like he told me once. He said, anything worth having is worth the wait, or you have to work for it, something like that. Nothing good comes easily. Yeah. Um... Oh, the Samirame.
Wheel of Fortune, all this mutable energy. Wow. Well, Wheel of Fortune twice and the Lovers and Virgo is mutable. King of Cups. Ten of Wands again. Damn. Synchronicity. And we got the Basic Bitch. Bicycle. Ten of Wands again. Look at this. These tens. My God. Eight of Wands, I call that the sex card. When you gonna give me some time, Sharona? Seven of Cups. Nothing seems right, so you're up all night, singing to the star above. Hey, baby, what you doing in the swamp of love? Swamp of love, King Tuff. I wore that CD out in 2012. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. My left ear is itching. This means someone is thinking about me. No, it means I need a Q-tip. Oh, that's better. Four of Pentacles, Eight of Cups, Knight of Pentacles. It's like I say, um, the numerological system that I use is from Linda Goodman's Star Signs. And in that system, four is Aquarius, eight is Capricorn, four and eight are the numbers of karma and fate. This feels fated. I feel like you've been through a few cycles with this person in this lifetime, probably in previous lifetimes, hell. And... The life before this one, maybe he was the dad, you were the daughter. Maybe you were twins, like Jamie and Cersei from Game of Thrones. I don't know, but you have ties. You're connected. And when you finally have your first night together in this lifetime, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. People don't still say that, but I do. Um... It's long overdue. Yeah, it's long overdue. You've waited for this. You fantasized about each other. There's probably been some sexting going on. Um, I don't know what was in the way of you finally getting together, other people, circumstances, distance. I don't know. But when you finally get together, you're going to go at it like a couple of rabbits. Um, various positions, hours upon hours of lusty, ambitious, soulful fucking. What I liked about my Gemini ex, the one that I met at OkCupid, I liked that when we were fucking, the lights were on. I don't know, that was cool because the Capricorn always wanted the lights off. The lights were on and there was eye contact. He would hold my hands and he would play songs that reminded him of me, German songs, which was really cool. Um, so there's that, you know, a meeting of the minds, a very heavy, deep, intense flirtation before you finally came together. And I see you coming together, not to be too graphic, but I'm seeing shared mutual orgasms. Um, this is a man, he does want to pleasure you. He wants for it to be as good for you as it is for him. And there's talking and there's eye contact and there's touching and there's afterglow, the whole nine yards. It's glorious, it's not just sex. Similar to pile one, I don't read this as casual. You've manifested this. Maybe you had a dry spell from hell. I've had several of those. I've been home for five years. I've already said that. I've said it numerous times. I have not had sex in five years. But, you know, I've got vibrators. So, 
TMI. I'm the queen of TMI. Um, there's been a dry spill. The Gobi, the Sahara. And so it's like going from the Sahara, the Gobi, to the rainforest. I see a lot of gratification. I see a lot of orgasms. I see the two of you finally deciding that you're going to commit to this. Whatever this is, I feel like it's crazy. You make the rules. You both probably require a lot of space. You give each other space. It's probably unconventional. Something is unconventional about this. You could be from different cultures. You could have an age gap. I don't know, but you're going to make it work. The two of you are going to finally commit to this. You're both putting in the hard ass work. So yeah, good sex and it's going to lead to a relationship that works for both of you. That is what I'm seeing for pile two. A possible astral combo for this person. They could have Sun in Aries, Gemini rising, Moon in Aquarius. You could have Sun in Virgo, Sagittarius rising, Moon in Aries. Those are just possibilities, but I feel like you have extremely strong sinistry. Conjunctions, oppositions, tight orbs, five degrees or less. Um, one or two squares to make things interesting. Okay, some letters. Maybe you're a hairdresser. Maybe this person's a hairdresser. Maybe this person tints windows. Maybe your first time will be in a vehicle with tinted windows. Finn. Whenever I see Finn, I think Pisces, but I'm not getting Pisces vibes. Tis my country, tis of the sweet land of liberty of thee I see. Maybe this person had a stint in rehab or on the psych ward. One of you could be an NI DOM, one of you could be an SI DOM, NI introverted intuition, SI introverted sensing, MBTI terms. Yeah. I'm seeing all kinds of things, but I'm gonna just leave it there. I don't wanna go any further with this. That's what I have for pile two. I hope that helps. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Check out my numerous playlists, my Zodiac readings, my community tab, my Patreon for in-depth tarot tutorials, and astrology videos, which is gracias. there, pile three. Here's your reading. You can hear my stomach. I've not eaten in a while. I'm not starving, but I'm ready to take some Tylenol PMs, get in the bath, get in bed with a book. Tarot of Sexual Magic. Three pick a card readings in a row. I think that's an all time record for me to do three pick a cards in a row. Plus, I've been doing personal readings all night.
King of Wands, Rey of Bastos, Justice, Lo Justicia. I love Spanish, but it doesn't love me. Five of Cups, Cinco de Copas, the Venera. Stars, that's a typo. La Estrella, the star. Justice again, synchronicity. Night of Air, the Bayo de Espadas. One of my many decks available at makeplaincards.com. Is this camera still going? Yeah, I feel like I've been doing this for an hour or longer, but it's probably because it's my third pick a card reading in a row on top of all the personal readings. Six of Pentacles, Seis de Oros, Two of Swords, or Two of Butter Knives, Dos de Espadas, The Will of Fortune, the Samirame, Eight of Cups, Clutch of the Copas, Five of Pentacles, Cinco de Oros, Nine of Pentacles, Wee! He's really spirited to be the slowest moving knight. Caballo de Oros. Okay. Basic bitch bicycle. What did he do? Da ten of wands. They is they bastos. Bed bath and beyond. Five of wands. Life stinks and the grass is green. We got a drama. Seven. I've got to get the beauty process on vinyl. It hurt my mom's feelings because she got me an Alexa for Christmas and I told her we're going to sell it. We're very paranoid in this family. We don't want Alexa listening to our conversations and I just don't see the point in Alexa. Alexa, what's the temperature in San Antonio? I can put that in my phone. I can Google that shit. Anyway, um, she said, I never get you the right gifts. And I said, Mom, it's okay. I give myself the best gifts. I give myself gifts all year long. So I'm already buying birthday gifts for myself, and this is January. I turn 49. February 17th. This is a timeless reading, but as I record this, Three of Pentacles, Three State Oros. I am my own Santa Claus. I bought some jewelry that I'm absolutely in love with at this little boutique in Marfa, Texas on vacation last Labor Day, September 2020, 2021. We're in 2022 now, but yeah, timeless reading. Oh, I just flipped the fuck out. Queen of Cups. Oh, no myth, Michael Penn, Knight of Pentacles. Maybe she's just looking for someone to dance with. I really like the lyrics in that song. Maybe I'll add that to my Full Moon and Cancer playlist. I always make playlists for the new moon and the full moon every month. Yeah, every month. What if I were Romeo in black jeans? What if I were Heathcliff? It's no myth to have once. Okay. Hmm. Well, this looks like some covert shit going down for pile three. Um too many chefs in the kitchen there. So I'm seeing multiple party. You could be with someone. This person could be with someone. So you've got 
some drama. You got a soap opera on your hands. I can see your first night together being in an econo lodge or maybe it's a bed and breakfast in the Ozarks or the Smoky Mountains or the Rocky Mountains, a bed and breakfast in Sedona where there are all these crystals around you and so you know you're in a good place. I don't know. Um, I see you connecting on social media and this could be someone you went to school with. Maybe you went to high school together or college and you reconnect on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, whatever, you reconnect. And although you're with other people, you want to explore this. And so you do. And what's it going to be like? I'm hearing that very soulful song from the 80s by Shirley, is it Shirley Murdoch? I've got that song in a few playlists. Maybe I'll add that to my Full Moon and Cancer playlist. I've not heard it in a while. As We Lay. I would love to sing that song in a karaoke bar and make a total, complete fool of myself. It's a beautiful song. I really get into it to the point where tears are just streaming from my eyes. I mean, she's really feeling that shit, and I'm feeling it right along with her as we lay. So, this could be very poignant, it could be very bittersweet. You have this night together, or this weekend together, and then you have to go your separate ways. Because you're married to other people. Now that's your story, or nope, not at all. That I'm seeing the sadness, this bittersweet quality to the sex. It is romantic. Feelings are felt. A choice has to be made. Are you going to really pursue this? Or was this just a memory to cherish? A memory to treasure? A possible astro combo for this person. They could have Sun and Leo, Libra rising. <clears throat> Moon and Cancer, that's only one possibility. You could have Sun and Libra. Aries rising, Moon and Taurus. I feel like you love each other. It's romantic. It's a felt connection. It's not casual, but it could be like Casablanca. You know, we'll always have Paris. We'll always have the Econa Lodge. We'll always have that bed and breakfast in Sedona. Something like that. Okay, the letters. Yep. Airy. Oh my god, it's a whole ass word. We've, we've got fairy. There's this magical feeling to this. And I'm not romanticizing third party. I'm not romanticizing extramarital affairs. But I'm a realist. You know, I live on planet Earth. And I know that complicated situations arise. I've been involved in a few myself. And I'm not ashamed. I don't deal in shame and guilt. It's false. It's hypocritical. It's not um, authentic. We choose what we choose, and we either stay there or we don't. It's the human experience. Stan. Star. Fast. Summer loving had me a blast. Summer loving happened so fast. Met a girl crazy for me. Met a boy cute as can be. So yeah, it's like that. I'll be 
your crying shoulder I'll be love suicide I'm just butchering songs tonight and I'll be better when I'm older I'll be the greatest fan of your life nasty nasty voice don't mean a thing Janet Jackson that is what I have for pile three. Hope that helps. Hope that was enjoyable. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Check out my numerous playlists, the Zodiac readings, my Patreon, which is Gracias. Chose Quattro, Pile 4. Here's your reading. Tarot of Sexual Magic. Four of Cups, Quattro de Copas. Seven of Wands, Sis. No, say it's a six. Siete de bastos. Okay, four of cups, seven of wands. Uh, la, 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 I'm stupid. The devil, el diablo. Monero. Knight of Earth, Knight of Pentacles. The world, el mundo, judgment. I can't say that. El juicio. I thought el juicio was justice. I'm missing some piece of the pie. I'm missing some puzzle piece. I love Spanish. It does not love me. It's unrequited love. Okay. Two one zero taro. One of my many bet. It's available at makeplainecarbs.com. I'm not on drugs, but I will be in about the next hour. I'll be popping two Tylenol PMs. El Diablo, the devil. Eight of Wands. I do call that the sex card. Ocho de Bastos. Judgment, I see you. Look at that. Samira May. It was my dream when I was a kid to work in a radio station, to be a disc jockey. And I really loved the idea when I got older of playing eclectic songs. Like one minute I'm playing Don't Explain by Billie Holiday. The next I'm playing Mother by Danzig. The next, I'm playing Days to Confuse, Led Zeppelin. Then I'm playing um, California Dreamin', The Mamas and the Papas. Just really eclectic, you know. In heaven, in another realm, in a much better realm, that is what I am. I am the eclectic this jockey that never sleeps. Ace of Swords, Os de Espadas, King of Swords, Rey de Espadas, Six of Swords, Seis de Espadas, Gracias. It's a really good habit to get into just saying Gracias or Danke. Is it Danke, Sean? They say in German, I don't know. Um, thank you, thank you. I was just thinking when I was going out to the garage earlier, there were a few steps and I was just happy. I was in a high vibration. I was talking to the painting that I was carrying, I think. Anyway, I had this memory of years ago. I was with my sister, my younger sister, she's a Libra, and her boyfriend at the time. 
he was a Pisces. And I hit the road with something, the car door, I don't know, there was some stupid accident. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And um, my sister said, who is she talking to? And her boyfriend laughed and said, she's talking to the street. <laughs> Uh, it's like a Capricorn boyfriend told me in 1994 when I was at Job Corps in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, because he was a stoner, all of his friends were stoners, and I had not really done drugs. I was a drug virgin at the age of 21. He said, you're a natural stoner. He said, you don't have to do drugs. You're just naturally stoned. I think that was a nice way of saying I was stupid, but I've got Mercury and Pisces, so I've accepted that. Four of Cups, Seven of Pentacles, Nine of Cups. Yeah, I'm on a natural high. Um, what is going on here? Four of Cups twice in this first row. You're waiting for this person to catch feelings. They're coming on slower than a damn turtle. Tortuga. They're not expressing their feelings and you're frustrated as hell. A possible astral combo for this person is Sun in Capricorn, Moon in Capricorn, Cancer rising. And you feel like you have to light a fire under their ass. You could have Sun and Leo, Aries rising, Moon and Aquarius, just possibilities. And we have the devil again. You're going to enjoy the sex because you finally have it. You can't believe it. We're actually finally having sex with each other. Wow. Um, but not just that, you're in love with this person. As weird as they are, as slow as they are, as much as they frustrate the fuck out of you, you love this person. People would not put the two of you together. You're an odd couple. Um, but it works for you, you know? Like some weird sandwich. Like in that movie with uh, Meg Ryan and Alec Baldwin, Prelude to a Kiss. I loved that movie. For a long time, I loved it, then I stopped loving it. But, um, no, I, I still love it. I've not seen it in years. But, um, she's talking about peanut butter and mayonnaise sandwiches. So you could be the peanut butter, they could be the mayonnaise, or vice versa. You wouldn't put the two of you together. Like when you think of peanut butter, you think of jelly. You don't think of mayonnaise. When I was in kindergarten, I wanted to take mustard sandwiches in my lunch, just mustard on white bread. And my mom said, no, people will think we're poor. I can't just give you mustard sandwiches for your lunch. Maybe that's an Aquarian thing. But um, you're a weird match, but you enjoy the sex. It's good, it works. So who cares what other people say? Who gives a fuck? You know? We don't live on Facebook. We don't live on Instagram where everything just fits. Like Barbie and Ken. Fuck that. Um, you're really into this person. And it is mutual. It just takes them a while to warm up. Who knows why? I don't know if they had a bad experience in the past, if they're carrying some baggage from a previous relationship. But once the two of you finally get together and you get it going, it's going to be very good, very lusty for both of you. And you're gonna say, God, this is weird, but it actually works. So that's good. sugar sex. So honey could be involved. Um, ready whip, chocolate sauce, putting stuff on each other, you know. I'm seeing that scene from nine and a half weeks. 
Mickey Rourke, Kim Basinger. This person could be a fan, a fan of your social media, a fan of your platform, a fan of your channel. Um, Grace. Okay. Six. Six orgasms in one night. The White Sox, the Red Sox. Okay, I'll quit while I'm not ahead. That's what I have for this Pick a Card reading that does conclude this Pick a Card reading. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing. Sending you all massive love and light from San Antonio. Peace out.